I've recently explored the idea of Super Sims in my Let's Play series where I'd been making one. I decided I'd turn all that experience and info into one big guide that lists out all the traits and rewards you want in order to make a Super Sim in The Sims 4. Later in the video, we'll show how absurdly powerful a Super Sim becomes, so stick around for that. The process of making a Super Sim can begin before your Sim's even born, mostly determined by who your Sim chooses to lay with, or stand, or sit, or explore interstellar space. There are a few traits of interest here. We'll start with the one people are most likely to want when making a powerful Sim. Magical Bloodline from Realm of Magic Sims who are descendants of Kassars receive one of the three ranks of Magical Bloodline, which grows stronger each generation. So starting with third generation Sims, you get Ancient Bloodline, which gives 30% more spellcasting XP, one extra talent point on rank up, and makes the caster 50% less likely to overload. So you can use magic to your heart's content. Another thing is Sulani Mana, which will let your Sims kids summon meteors. You get this by bumping uglies with one of the elemental ghosts on Sulani. No, you can't target the meteorites to destroy some townie you hate, but you can get some rare metals from the resulting rock. Well, once it cools. Or you could possibly call Sims dumb enough to touch it to have a life-threatening encounter with fire. Solani Mana is good for collecting metals and crystals, but they get one additional power. They can bless a plant once every 18 hours with the gift of Sulani ability. It will bump it up one quality level. It's not bad, it's just not knock my socks off. Father Winter's Baby is mentioned last here. It's only something you should care about if you actually have whims enabled. And I'd say you also need to enjoy chasing whims. This is because the rewards strangely only boost the satisfaction gains of whims, a feature that is disabled by default, which says a lot. And yeah, I'm sad to say that. Very big missed opportunity for a cool reward that would have got Father Winter a lot of tail. No one is more disappointed about this than him. I didn't take any of these on my own Super Sim because none of them inspired me to care enough. Moving along, if you want a carefree experience, realize you're in control of aging and long lifespan gives way, way more time than you need. Doing this on normal lifespan does take a bit of your attention even if it's not hard. During early childhood, use the child's play lot trait to help your kid learn faster. Good schools will increase the rate your sims kid gets higher grades in school. Study Spot is the single most powerful at 25% and I confirmed it does help toddlers. The first chance to get some nice boosts happens once a sim is in the toddler phase. It turns out learning to talk well and only pee in appropriate places is something that will keep you out of trouble. If you manage to max out all the skills, you can get the top notch toddler reward trait which boosts lifetime skill and career gains by 25% a really powerful reward compared to most. There's also a happy toddler trait in case you don't manage to max them all before the sim ages up. You get this by having them all up to at least level 3, but it's only a 10% boost. It's still more super than Father Winter's baby though. At childhood, you'll get to pick the first of three traits. Two of my favorites, Dance Machine and Foodie, are both still off limits at that point. Loves the Outdoors is a trait with minimal downsides, as is Creative. In general, I'd stay away from purely emotional boosts and consider things that'll help your sim be more effective. There is a childhood aspiration for each of the childhood skills, mental, motor, creative, and social. Each aspiration rewards a trait that corresponds with one of the four categories of adult skill. You'll boost either mental, creative, social, or physical skills by 20% for each one you knock out. You also set your sim up with about 4,000 satisfaction points that will help a lot in the teen years. 
I'm mentioning this one early in the childhood phase because it's something you need to be at least a little aware of from childhood up through teen. Your sim can get up to five traits from getting each of the associated parenthood character values up to 90% green. Even combined, these aren't as powerful as top-notch toddler because they're mostly tied to AI or uh, or else only useful in certain situations, but it's still worth considering if you want your sim to have access to every boost. You should wrap this up as a teen, but certain values such as empathy are easier to do as a child. Definitely have your kid's parent teach to say sorry and please and thank you. This will give them a head start on conflict resolution and manners. Kids can get easy empathy playing with the doctor playset. Now we'll move on to aging up to teen. You get a bonus trait when you first pick your sim's adult aspiration in the teen stage. You also get to dress them to undo the immeasurable damage the game has done. While not many bonus traits are amazing, the quick learner one for picking a knowledge aspiration gives a boost to learning all skills. In addition to this one, you should also consider Muser, which gives your sim a higher effective level and creative skills when they're inspired. While this is a huge help, it's not much use when you're past level 7 or 8 in those skills, so I consider Quick Learner to be the more powerful of the two. I don't consider it that great, but I feel that the Nature Aspirations Collector trait is worth mentioning in a Super Sim context because it's rare to get a bonus to the rate you gather rare collectibles and it may be more valuable than Quick Learner if you're into that. I don't believe it works for all collections, however. During the teen years, you should really take another look at lot traits, where your options for helping your super sim will have expanded by this time. A lot. Study Spot can give a boost to all skills, though I do not think it helps with child or teen homework. It does increase skill gains across the board by 25%, the other boosts are actually stronger than Study Spot and give 50% to a few skills each. But hey, have fun with it. You can switch based on whatever your sim is currently doing. It's a system ripe for the cheesing, for no effort at all. Signing up for Scouts is only a matter of a few hours in attendance on weekends, but it can lead to a big reward. Use the scouting board to track the nine different badges. Get them all and you'll unlock the scouting aptitude trait for your sim. With this, you'll get a 25% boost to gains for all skills. While I didn't do this, I decided I definitely should have signed up for scouts in childhood, but not worried too much about the badges. Why? Because there is some overlap in good deeds, responsibility, and other activities between scouts, character values, and childhood aspirations. Teens should focus on wrapping up character values and scouts, but some of the childhood aspiration work would count toward this if you wanted to finish faster. Getting an A in high school gives your sim a nice boost toward university if you want to go that route. You'll also start a bit higher up when you join careers. This, along with top-notch toddler, can help you max a career at least three or four dates faster than usual. Sims with all the traits I just talked about will have an easier time attending university. They should almost get a free ride based on the things they've already done and require little preparation. Getting a degree gives a big starting boost to many careers, making you high level from the get-go. You will also earn more money, and get promotions and paid time off faster. This is definitely optional because a super sim hardly needs a career unless you want to go with something with real useful objects and abilities like scientists and you'd be better off to just get to rank 10 without the degree. There are a few rewards that are must haves and not skill specific. There are others we'll look at later but these are going to give boosts across the board so they are key. Morning Sim and Night Owl both give a boost during a specific part of the day and will make the majority of the day skill gain time. Savant does as much as both of these but costs 4000 It's only 25% so a bit overpriced given the cost of the two time specific traits. A, a bit overpriced but it does seal the deal. What's not overpriced are the other three. Creative Visionary boosts the rate of masterpieces. Marketable attacks the issue head on by just increasing sell value 
by anywhere from 10% to triple the normal values, greatly increasing income. This one should cost more. Entrepreneurial increases promotion speed for super sims that will join a career. Not nearly as important if you have a degree because the meter can only move so far each day and you can also work hard and go in with emotional boosts. We'll talk about need related rewards later. I personally consider it controversial and I'll explain why. Something that could be hugely beneficial is the tiny home lot type, particularly the smallest type, the micro home, that gives a wealth of benefits to important categories across the board. Double skill gains, increased relationship gains, more comfort, half bills, a double positive moodlet duration. I'd call it off the charts, but clubs holds the record for that one. Yeah, these clubs, they came and kind of flipped the game's balance on their head. See, clubs give a bigger boost than everything I've talked about up to now, combined. That's right, the 250% skill gain they provide just for making a club and building up some points is a higher figure than every single reward I've mentioned until now, combined. That this is a trivially easy activity is something that is kind of insulting to the work you put into everything else here. What the? Why does that even work? Why would they let you do that? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't help it. Clubs are still to be considered if you'd like to max out a sim. They are not restricted to just a few boosts. You can get one for every skill and buy another every few hundred points you make. That clubs also provide plus three happy while in a gathering, which can be 24 seven if you want, is something I should definitely bring up, which I did just now. Clubs are undeniably a powerful feature in raw boostage. Let's now consider the two occult and what they provide with the weakest mention first. I'm sorry vampire fans, you know I picked vampire for Kobe but we're talking about raw power here. The Sims 4 vampires are definitely still in the running for inclusion on a super sim. You can pick weaknesses that aren't necessarily very bad and get some massive gains. Vampires are immune to emotional deaths by nature and get access to a number of super powerful super sim buffs. They can achieve a big 75% skill gain during the overnight hours with Child of the Moon. They'll also achieve the ability to sleep less with vampiric slumber. The utility of some skills is there in special situations with the ability to influence the emotions of a whole room or hibernate until you need your vamp to get up. They also have one less need to deal with, given they do not have bladders. Okay, so vamps are cool and I prefer them, but I'm going to acknowledge that spellcasters are much more powerful. Oops. And some of my resentment toward them is just representative of how I feel about difficulty. They can do more than vampires can alone with the ability to fill all needs and use 14 other potions, one of which can stave off death. They get to use familiars, providing a boon against death yet again, and also have spells that can let them clone objects near effortlessly. They have their own perk tree that can make them better at all of these things. Why am I not mentioning mermaids? They get a few powers, but mermaids just aren't that special. They hardly qualify as a full-blown occult to me at this point. If you were going to be normal, you might enjoy being a mermaid. They do get the lore ability and certain cool spells like Siren Song. I just do not consider them to be in the running as much as Vampire and Spellcaster. Your Vampire, Spellcaster, or Normie but buff Super Sim can also be a celebrity. This brings about a variety of benefits, though not as key as some other things I mention here. Being a celebrity is very much a matter of taste, but you can get access to celebi serums, which you can use fairly regularly to get 20% gains to all skills, but for a measly three hours. Yeah, spoiler alert, they're not worth it. With celebrity, you can go extra far in breaking the game's career system, as they can get access to Easy Street, which doubles paychecks and adds on even more career performance, meaning you'd get overmax promotions faster and twice the raises. Even more reason to consider whether you really need 
a degree. Celebrities have no issues getting friends with the instant besties perk. Having a celebrity under your control allows you to give your super sim a big 50% skill boost for a few hours with the inspirational speech, but it's for use on other sims, not yourself as far as I know. Aside from one career I've mentioned, scientist, there is one more that gives a unique ability that is desirable just purely for the spectacle it creates. Snaggle Fluster comes at level 9 mixology career and only that level, but it gives you this 300% boost to skill gains that is even bigger than clubs. You've just gotta wait on the opportunity to come up. It's annoying as you need to be a specific level, but it's interesting to have a skill that can get you to over 7 times normal skill gain even for a few short hours. Top off your sim's bladder, be a vampire, or have still bladder to avoid having your sim pee themselves while using this drink. It drains bladder very heavily. You can also boost the gains of mental skills with the amygdalite drink just by having a bar level 1 mixology, and getting focused before clicking the bar. This isn't as strong as Snaggle, but it is very good for the amount of effort it takes, which is almost none. If your gains are high enough though, I don't necessarily think it's worth the time spent making and drinking this. No kidding. Something I want to bring up now that we've covered a lot of the skill gains is that you might want to consider purchasing some immunities. Cold and heat acclimation exist if you have seasons, which will make your sim be able to tolerate really hot and cold weather. Carefree gives your sim immunity to tension, which is helpful for being low fun or having used work hard on a long shift at work, which also makes low fun. It's one of the better immunities to go after. It can also nullify some of the celebrity fame quirks or a vampire weakness like Guilty Drinker. In order to truly deck out your sim, you'll need to pursue some aspirations and complete them to get an ever-growing list of reward traits. Best-selling authors can write the book of life and make another sim resurrectable should they become a ghost. It can also be read by the sim to top off their needs. Completing Big Happy Family will give your super sim the patriarch ability, which combined with high level parenting will let them give a skill bonus to nearby sims, meaning it can help with making a super sim's kids also super. If your sim's a vampire, definitely complete Master Vampire to get a true master in order to get expanded energy reserves and more reliable mind powers. Beloved from friend of the world will freeze your sims relationships with others, so they'll always be friends. We all know that friends are important in Sims 4. To be honest, doing this little section made me a little sad. I didn't realize there are not enough aspirational rewards that I'd consider powerful or interesting enough to bring up here. And these are our stand-ins for skill challenges. <sighs> To a large extent, a lot of the rewards I brought up do not impact The Sims 4's core gameplay loop. It is a fairly weak loop in my eyes and stripping it of need management is a bad idea if you plan to play a sim long term. I regretted just taking needs no one and being a vampire because I really only have to care about thirst and energy occasionally. Going so far as to lock energy full along with bladder and hunger stops you caring about having any sort of routine at all. You will never play on speed 4 unless your sims at work. It's shattering to the gameplay of sims 4 and for that reason I began to find it incredibly boring. Sims is a need management game at its heart. While you're trying to care for your sim you want to accomplish things. The accomplishing things while caring for your sim is important to the gameplay of Sims 4. It will help you finish a super sim faster to take these rewards and certainly make your sim better than mine, but I will be more likely to have something that resembles fun than you will be. Sims 4 is not strong enough in other areas to bear it. That's my opinion. You can have your own and you're aware, so make your own choices. A super sim should not live in squalor. Their fridge should keep things fresh, butts should be clean, and showers fast. Everything around the home should be upgraded over time. They should have access to powerful things like the Celestial Crystal Crown or the cloning machine from Scientist if they aren't a spellcaster. They might also want the ray gun that Scientist gets, which can be upgraded to do different things. 
you should probably at some point seek out the artifacts from Jungle Adventure. I think this varies depending what packs you have installed because none of these are worth buying a pack for unless you want other stuff from that particular expansion or game pack, whatever. Uh, like robotics is a good example. It is a convenience and helpful to have access to some robots, but they're hardly necessary. You could just as well use sprinklers from Seasons to water your garden or get free services for a gardener or buy Apache. That said, gardening is a base game skill every Super Sim should have access to. Why? For access to quality produce for managing hunger anytime, Magnificent Fruits and Veggies gives Sims a big plus three happy moodlet and fill hunger up a tad. Fruits and Veggies can also be used in the level seven plus gourmet cooking recipes that I highly recommend you take advantage of for slowing hunger decay and making Sims happy for several hours. I think that a Super Sim should have fitness for winning fights, and charisma for winning lovers, but that's purely opinion. High gardening and gourmet cooking, handiness for upgrades, wellness for its meditation and teleportation, research and debate for bossing sims around. These are all much less likely to be considered controversial than other skills. Before we get to the results of putting this all together and some good comparisons, I want to say something about this whole idea. In a way, this guide so far has been an exposition of the best boosts and most rewarding activities in the game. While I do have some complaints, I highly recommend you guys try this at least one. I had a lot of fun building up a sim with all the best traits and rewards. The results are insane, as you'll see momentarily. It is fun to break the game for once and push it as hard as I can, but it is also by nature that Sims 4 is not able to stand up to the bonuses it gives you. Not while still resembling a game. It gets extremely broken, and as I mentioned with the needs rewards section, it really fails under pressure. The gameplay loop gradually vaporizes and leaves you with a very bare bones experience. This doesn't happen until far in, but some of these things like clubs and tiny living bonuses break the game. The good thing is you can choose not to have those boosts active at all times unless you feel like it. Like at least with clubs, I can stop the gathering. With tiny living, you'd need to add on to your lot. So let's see a side-by-side -side comparison of a normal sim, a sim with clubs and tiny living boosts, and my super sim with every boost mentioned in this guide, even an active snaggle fluster drink. Wow, what the heck? He's already level four. It's already obvious I'm gonna have to switch him to another skill when he maxes acting. I realized right away that we have to stay on speed one because it's too fast for anything higher. Guess we are gaining levels in a handful of minutes on speed one. So as stated, the Super Sim gets 300% from Snaggle Flusser, 250 from Clubs, 100 from Tiny Home, 100 from Vampire, and about eight other bonuses. So while under the effects of Snaggle Fluster, a Sim can get very near to 10 times the usual skill gains. With a few more things I failed to think of, maybe some boosts that are for specific skills or with mentoring, a sim can get well over 10 times faster skill gain. The near 7 times normal speed a sim gets without snaggle fluster is really wild and impressive. While I was originally not very impressed with this drink just looking at math, it looks like something here is stacking multiplicatively because it definitely would appear we're moving far more than 10 times faster and the sim in the middle has clubs and tiny living boosts, so she's no slouch. That's 350 right there. Now I will say that knowing the math plays out this way, it did make me stop caring about emotion as much unless I wanted to show off. Because you can go so fast that it may be detrimental to spend more time getting a sim ready for skilling. Making a super sim is a lot of fun because you have many goals to check off. I definitely recommend everyone do it at least once and in order to help with that, I'm making a text version of this guide with a checklist for you. I'll pin a comment and make a community post and guide announcement when it's done. So check the site in the next day or two if you're interested. You need knowledge from all over the game so it is pretty entertaining. I think you could even speedrun this and compete in a challenge based on a checklist, but it'd weigh heavily in favor of people with certain packs. So kind of difficult. It should be fun anyway. 
Just gotta keep track of how long it took to get it all. I am not kidding when I say that this video took a whole work week to edit. And giving me a like and commenting on the video does encourage me to try to put that much into videos when I can. Sharing it on other sites like Reddit and Facebook helps a lot too. I really learned a lot from the process of making this and feel I'm gradually improving. Let me know what you think. Uh, I need to find out if it's worth it to put much more time into these and this is a test in more ways than one. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.